to a Revna Den. I'm Michael Hassenfang, and this is my first video entitled My Introduction, because that's pretty much what it's going to be. You're going to hear my life story and um, everything that I've been through pretty much within the past three years about all of what is going down in the world today and with what God has been planning and what is soon to be coming. It's been an interesting past couple of years on my pioneer walk, uh, the past setting I was doing this uh, cave dwelling season, and been listening to a lot of prophets, been listening to a lot of sermons, a lot of lectures, a lot of um, patriots speak as well, and I'm going to be bringing up a lot of them, uh, a lot of different words that I've heard, a lot of dreams and visions that I've had myself. It's going to be a different take from what I'm used to doing, just writing on my Telegram page. <clears throat> but I felt that maybe now is the time that I should start making these videos to get people a little bit more awake to what is going on, and hopefully turn them to Christ as well, too. So I guess I will start this session by praying. Um, Heavenly Father, Please give us the insight and the knowledge to understand exactly what are you doing this day. We don't need to know everything, but we need to be aware of the times and the seasons. Many of us need to open our eyes to what exactly is going on, especially with our administration in the nation today, what is going on around the world, the shakings you are having done, both internally within us and externally around the world in this turning of the tables, if you will, to what is going on. Um, I just hope that being a watchman on the wall, I will be able to be aware and more informed to give this to people who watch this show, if any, <laughs> and uh, hopefully they will be able to start praying and intercessing, declaring and decreeing as well during this time where we desperately need it and we need to be aware and partake and be in agreement with what you are doing, even during these dark times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Not even sure where to start, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I'm new to all of this. I'm new to video making. The only thing I ever really did was little the uh, Windows Movie Maker clips for my music that I do on like Kickstarter. Uh, actual videos like this I've never even touched. I don't really care to do. I'm not one who really enjoys being in the limelight. And even with my music, I've been writing lyrics since the late 80s and recording albums since the early 90s. And I never played live once. I don't care to. Um, there was even a time when the original band I was in called Troll, we, we even had this thing where we, we didn't even want to sell albums. We just wanted to give them away. We had no interest in making money. And this video is going to kind of be the same, this series. I'm, I'm not monetizing these. I'm labeling them as in the public domain. You can use them, spread them as much as you want, bash them even. I don't care. I'm just trying to get a message out if you don't like it, but you want to use it for your own fun, go right ahead. It's it's meaningless to me. I'm just here to get the word out. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to ask for money. I'm not here to sell a book, though maybe I'll probably write a book in the future. I don't know, but I, I'm not here for any sort of financial gains. I'm here to spread the word, and I don't think or would feel right that being a good idea to ask for money in the process. I'm not a church. I'm not a pastor. I don't see myself as a prophet, though I've had dreams and visions. And the Lord spoke to me a few times on various things. But uh, I'm not 501c3 incorporated, and I suggest any priest or pastor or church or prophet or anyone who's in this field to get their head out of that noose. You don't want to do that. You want to very much so get out of the 501c3 because now you're beholden to the government and their laws through this tax purpose, which is silly because you are not 
an exemption, you are an exception if you are a church. You don't need to be a 501c3. You're already tax exempt. So, don't do that. Now that I went off on that little rabbit trail, <clears throat> we can move forward into what it is that I've been doing for these past couple of years. Ever since COVID, I shouldn't even say COVID, I, ever since November of 2020 with the election, let's just start there. I've had a very interesting time of listening to prophets and the words that they have been saying, a lot of patriots that have been coming out on certain live streams themselves, mentioning what is going on, what is happening. And I should probably start with this, uh, just to give you the skinny right off the bat on what I'm doing with this live stream and where I'm coming from is that God is pretty much going to be turning the tables over during this time. The world you see now is not what it's going to be in the future. And I'm not talking some far off distance revelation where we all get raptured, you know, and then the three years, uh, three and a half years, sorry, of the tribulation happens and it's, you know, woe on earth. And then we come back down after, you know, the Antichrist is defeated and we live in a thousand years with Jesus during his millennial kingdom. That's, that's still a ways off, at least from what I know with what many of the prophets have said. Um, and I, I do believe them because it doesn't seem like it's the time. Now, no man knows the time or the hour, but we are supposed to be aware of the seasons, and this is not the season. The enemy is trying to push forward and ramp up revelation to happen. They want the end times. They want the tribulation to come, but it's a preemptive strike. They've been doing this forever. If you've ever read anything about history, the devil is always trying to do this, constantly trying to just push it forward, push it forward, push it forward, and perpetually being stopped all the time as well, too. So this is going to be one of those, but I think it's also going to be the last one. This is the last push that he's going to make, and this is the final uh, setting of the foot down with God and turning this whole worldly system over. And what I mean by that is literally everything. Uh, work, the financial system, the governments, um, just how you've been living in this Babylonian system is going to be completely upended on its head. And what we're going to see is something that I've never believed in before, which is a kingdom age. And for those who don't know, it's pretty much a lifestyle of what should have been pretty much during Eden times. Under God's rule, it's going to be a kingdom error of God showing us this is how it was supposed to be. This is what you are supposed to be living like, supposed to be living in, supposed to be doing financially. If there is such a way to, to, to phrase that, I still believe there's going to be, you know, there's still going to be a financial system, but he's setting it up to where it's going to be given back to the kingdom of God, uh, where the enemy is not constantly hoarding it, this Babylonian system where pretty much all of us are enslaved to some sort of work, some sort of beholden taskmaster, getting just the pittance amount given to us while they hoard and, you know, like pretty much like Skeksis just grab everything for themselves. Um, it's going to be given back to the people. There's going to be a new way of life, new technology. Um, and for those who don't want to hear it, or for those who, you know, um, even side with our president, uh, there's many prophets that say Trump is coming back. It's not a 2024 thing. Um, God has been saying for many years now, do not trust or look to the electoral college, the, the voting system, your, your, uh, what's the word? Um, your presidential elections, pretty much more or less. No one looked to any of that. That's, that's not what's going to save you. And, and it's not Trump that saves you either. He's not some savior, but he is God's anointed one at this time. He is... Uh, the David, the Cyrus of this time. 
Um, and so even though we don't look to him as our savior, he is one of God's many tools during this time, a person being called to set forth this new precedence of what's going down in this kingdom age. And so we should back him. We should be in agreement with him because in doing so, we are in agreement with God. Many people have mentioned this. Many prophets have mentioned this. A lot of us are still behind it. I know it sounds weird, and if it does, and if you're not into that, or you don't like it, and you don't like these prophetic words that have been given out, then this is probably the time to stop. And I'm sorry if I'm constantly rambling, but uh, I, I don't have any notes in front of me. I'm not one of those people who like to outline stuff. I do sometimes write things down, and, oh, what am I going to talk about in certain, you know, certain clips, certain sections within the series, you know, to get in a, a rough draft idea of where I'm going, but I'm not exact. I don't have notes in front of me right now. I, I'm just, I'm literally just rambling off stuff. So, uh, I, I may be hard to follow, <laughs> but that's just the way I do things. So, this series is going to be talking about that. It's going to be talking about prophetic words. It's going to be talking about spiritual warfare because Arevna then, uh, Arevna is Greek for research. It just means to investigate, to, to, to research, to understand, to, to dive into certain things. And this is my office den, so Arevna den, well, why not? I, I could have used a foyer, I guess, for the Greek term for den, but that would have been too, I don't know, too fluffy. So I notice a lot of Americans sort of like to mix in some sort of fancy Hebrew or Greek word or Latin and then throw in their American word too. So Revna then it is, and this is what we're going to be talking about. And to start it off, I'm just going to do my introduction of me and where I came to this. Going back to what I was mentioning before about the election in 2020, um, I voted Trump. 2016, I, I did not vote Trump at all. I, I was like, this. I'm not voting for this clown. This is insanity. Why would somebody do this? And um, those four years definitely showed me why somebody would do this. It, it changed my perspective. It changed my way of thinking on who God can use and how he was using him and what Trump was actually doing. I think a lot of people didn't even notice during his first four years, even though he just had constant bombardment. I mean, from day one, it was just, you know, accusation, 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 just constantly, constantly. We're just going to badger the absolute hell out of this guy and make his life a living hell so that he can't do absolutely anything during his first season, uh, first round, I guess, the first four years term. Sorry, that's a word I'm looking for. And, um, man, he managed to pull out quite a few things. And the way he did it, 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 it was very, it was, it was business-like. I mean, he is a businessman, but there was something else to it. And it started to get me thinking, like, this, this seems, this seems different. This seems like something is, is there. But the constant fighting that he had to go through and, and the constant badgering uh, from both sides, actually, and from the, the media and from big tech and from pretty much everyone around the world. And uh, it's like this guy, I mean, think about it. This guy was, this guy was Trump. Like in the eighties, everyone wanted to be Trump. That was the name. Some of you may have not been alive during that time, might not have been born. Uh, Trump was a huge name and very popular and very famous. And I mean, like you wanted to be this guy. And then he ran for president, and all of a sudden, just watch the fireworks. Just a complete 180. People just overnight hated this guy. And I, I couldn't help but think there was something more to it than just a political agenda. And I've, I've always been into spiritual warfare. Um, as a, not, not a teen, but in my 20s, I, I did three exorcisms, two at one time. Uh, I, I was into the dark arts before then. I'll get into this more later on in my introduction, but I, I'm just saying I, I just had a feeling that there was there was something more to this with Trump and the draining of the swamp and and the things he was trying to do to revamp, to reset this not the global reset, but reset our nation to a standard that was um, 
in par with how the original founding fathers had it. And the backlash was just intense. And by the end of his first term in 2020, I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm voting for this guy. So, something's here. Something's happening. And uh, it seems that night we won. Like, Trump won it. And I'm like, okay. And, but I had a weird feeling. I'm like, things started to slow down. Things started to stop. And I'm like, they're, they're doing something. They're rigging something. I'm like, I'm going to go to bed and I'm going to wake up and Biden's going to be president. I just, I, I knew that was going to happen. Uh, sure enough, next day, um, somehow, some reason, the it just spiked up, like straight up. Blatant, blatant fraud. That never happens in the history of ever to just spike like that. With, with votes. No, nobody does that. That doesn't happen. And I just knew, everyone knew. I mean, let's, let's, just, let's just call it what it is. I mean, media has been bashing us for so long and you know, saying we're conspiracy theorists and stuff like that. Just, you know what? It was fraud. We all know it. You know it. Dogs know it. Everyone knows it. Like, it's, it's just blatantly in your face. You, you, you can't hide that. Um... However, that morning I was pretty depressed. I mean, I, I went for a walk early in the morning. Um, and I was just thinking, God, what's, what are you doing? So you, like, we did not just go through four years of all this changeover to be completely shut down. It doesn't seem like something you would do. And I, I just, I was depressed but i also had a very weird feeling that something was happening like this this is not this is not the end of it something's going on something is just starting um so still depressed i went back to the house and uh, for maybe a couple days maybe even a week i was just bummed and just trying to flip through youtube um channels to see what other people were saying and it just didn't i don't know Everything I was watching didn't seem right. And I finally get to a show called Flashpoint. And there they had, I believe it was Hank Kuhneman who was on. He was being interviewed. And Cat Care. And for those of you who don't know Cat Care, Cat Care is like this. Forgive me, Cat, if I missed, if I say your age wrong. It was somewhere in the 60s and 70s. Woman, I, I don't know your age. That's just what you look. Who has pink hair and considered herself a prophetess, and um, maybe uh, Kent Christmas? I, I can't remember who else was on it, Maybe or Nathan French. Somebody else was there. And it was like three people being interviewed on Flashpoint. And they were coming on saying, this this is not the end, this is, this is just the beginning. Uh, Trump is still president. This was taken from him, and something is going down that God is allowing to happen. And we're going to have to sit through this process because this is a sting operation, not just from God, but from our military as well. This is a very covert sting operation. Something's going down. And in order for it to go down, everyone needs to be taken down simultaneously. This isn't a piece by piece by piece by piece thing. It's we need to sit and wait and once the trap is set and clamps in, everything's going down at the same time. And so for a bunch of us, we're like, oh, okay, this is, this is great. So this, what, next week it'll be done? And here we are, three years later, still waiting on both the Lord and the military to do their thing for this trap to snap. But within those three years, I have seen stuff and I have uh, seen prophetic words come to pass that are inexplainable and most definitely from God. Um, uh, I, those three years, and I'm not lying when I say this, I've spent probably anywhere between 8 to 16 hours a day watching videos on prophetic words. Um, 
I was doing work for the in-laws and our family business with the insurance, but nobody was calling in and it was dead and it was a lot of just dead weight, you know, air at work with nothing to do. So I'm like, well, uh, while I'm just tidying paperwork or answering the phone or paying off bills, I'm going to sit and I'm going to watch all these prophetic words, you know, on YouTube or Rumble or wherever they were playing. But I would do it at twice the speed because I'm used to a lot of these prophets when they're giving prophetic words and stuff like that would speak slow, you know, and, and like uh, a lot of them just speak slow in general. So I would speed it up because I could I could hear what they're saying. I can understand it. So I was actually getting probably closer to you know, 20 some hours of video each day. And I'm like every day go to work, listen, come home, watch videos. Uh, it's almost like my family life was on hold. Almost everything was on hold for me. God was ramping up something in me, and it was it was a very dead season for me. Not f from him, but just from life in general. Like, everything was back burner, and this focus I had on God and what he was trying to say and listening to all these prophets and listening to some of these patriots, it's like he was building up stuff in me to become more of a spiritual warrior. And pretty much that's that's been my life for the past three years. And I think last year in February, yes, I started my journaling on Telegram. Uh, which you can go to my site. I'll link it down here so you can read, maybe see where we're going to be going with this, sh with this series on all the stuff I was writing, all the visions I had, all the ideas that were coming to me from getting into the word, from praying to God, for declaring and decreeing, for listening to prophets. Um, it was a roller coaster. And to be perfectly honest, more depressing and maddening than it was good. Those are my daughters. So I'm going to put this on pause for a second, let them know that. All right, I'm back. And as a family man, I'm just going to say right off the bat, there's probably going to be a lot of that. A lot of slicing of these clips because I'm going to have to get up and get some for the girls or the wife's going to want something. And there's, it won't be a straight through thing. A lot of it is probably going to be uh, me cutting out saying, ah, uh, a lot. Again, because I don't have notes. <laughs> so, so, yes, the past three years have been me building up, writing in my journal, listening to prophetic words. And I think I'm to the point where God has wanted me to start making these videos to talk to you about certain things. Talk to you about stuff that I've encountered when journaling or listening to prophetic words. And I think they will help you along your way as well, too, to let you know that you're not alone, to let you know that you're not the only person who's feeling this, who's going through this pioneer or path-setting process. A lot of us are in our caves. We've been through a cave season and a very secluded, very reclusive, very isolated and alone. And it was during that time where God was building us up into something better or something that he's preparing us for within these coming days, which I think are going to be coming very soon with exposures. And I'm sure many of you by this time have noticed the ramp up of exposures that have been happening. Just one after the other, after the other, after the other. It started off slow, you know, last year or even the year before you had some whistleblowers come out. They were scoffed at and mocked. But then the floodgates started to crack more and more and more. And more started to come out. Now it's getting to the point that it's just, it, it, it's everywhere. It's exposure after exposure after exposure. It's, it's going to get ramped up. And it's going to get to the point that it's going to blow in their face. And they won't be able to contain this dam anymore. And the water is just going to wash right over them. Here's the thing, though, that we need to pay attention to and that God has also been warning us about, is that if you think Satan is not going to retaliate because of this, you haven't read your Bible. We are going to go through some very extremely dark periods. Won't last long, but I'm laughing because back in 2020, we thought it would only be a couple weeks, and here's been three years. So when I say it won't last long in God's terms, who knows how long that's going to be. I'm hoping it's not going to last long, but 
That said, we're going to go through a dark period. Now, this will be from the enemy, but it will also be from God. Because it was in his darkness that our light will shine forth. He's going to use this time, this period, this, this darkening period, to flip the tables and return everything back to us, back to the children of God. But don't fear the darkness when it happens. After three years of being in isolation, I'm, I'm ready for anything. I'm like, Lord, rip the earth in half for all I care. I'm waiting to see the volcanoes. I'm waiting to see the eruptions. I'm waiting to see the literal darkness or the shutdown of the internet, which is going to be coming, or, you know, just complete, utter chaos. It's like, give me just something, anything to know that this is going down. I, I need to know this is going down because I'm starting to, like, lose my sanity waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting on this. It's getting just crazy. But... Rest assured, I feel that it is coming very soon. Many of the prophets have said it too. They've, they've been ramping up their words, not in quantity, but just in how, what they feel is going to be coming. And they're like, we're, we're right at the threshold of what is going to be kicking in pretty soon. Um, so we need to get ready for that. And I know many of you may mock me for saying stuff like that or for the visions that I've had or the prophetic words that I'm listening to. And I wasn't always like this. Um, I, I was actually completely opposite. I mean, even in my teens and stuff, I was raised Catholic for a good portion of my life, about half my life at least. But I never made it to confirmation because I was always one who never thought that I, I needed to set myself into the four walls of whatever this organization was, be it Catholicism or a Lutheran or Baptist or whatever church it is. I didn't like that idea. I just, I always liked the idea of me being part of the Bride of Christ, a priest and a king and an ambassador to his kingdom and a watchman on the wall and a soldier for who he is. We are, we are, as Christians, already part of the body of Christ. And from that point on, after leaving the Catholic faith, uh, I always bounced around from various churches, trying, trying them all. Um, I haven't tried Orthodox yet. I really love Orthodox music. I haven't been to an Orthodox church yet, but, I mean, I was part of Calvary Chapel. I've been to Lutheran Church. And my dad is a Methodist. I've been to Baptist Church. I've been to Catholic Church. I mean, I've... I've I've tried a whole bunch of different types. And I haven't been to a Pentecostal one yet either, so I'm wondering how I would fit in there, especially in this day and age with all these prophets running around and speaking in tongues and declaring and decreeing. So, um, But before I did all this bouncing around in various churches, I had a fallout phase and started to get very Gnostic in my studies, in my teens and in my 20s, because who doesn't do that in their teens and in their 20s? I was uh, very much into the Gothic culture, and I was doing tarot readings. I was uh, into Reiki. I was into all sorts of different, you know, like reading Deepak Chopra and, uh, you know, like understanding uh, dream interpretations and pretty much everything the Bible says not to do, I was doing. <laughs> not because I, th I thought that I, I had a very weird understanding or misunderstanding, I should say, is that... I always thought the Bible said not to do that, not because it was wrong, but because we as humans cannot fully comprehend or grasp it. And so I was doing all this stuff thinking that, well, if someone was enlightened enough to understand this or do this, then they can ascend into this world of magic and stuff and not be, you know, encumbered or pulled down or swayed in by demons or doctrines of demons, as C.S. Lewis would say. Um... And during that time, I also became a priest with ULC. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It was a pastor. I didn't claim myself as a priest because I didn't want to, you know, step on the toes of the Catholics. So they had the priests. I was just a reverend or a pastor. And I knew that that was probably a bad idea come my 30s when I really started to go to church more, go to Calvary Chapel, study the Bible more, go through it verse by verse. Listen to people like Chuck, uh, Chuck Smith, Chuck Messler, read C.S. Lewis. Um, yeah, 
that Dark Arts Time was a time also that I did the exorcisms, which I will also get into in a different part of my series where I'll discuss stuff like that. Um, banishment and exorcisms and deliverance, uh, possession, oppression, things like that. And so I, I've had quite quite a range of different uh, different denominations, different ways of study, different ways to look at uh, Christianity and how to worship and the ways to pray, stuff like that. And I think it's it's definitely helped me during this time, but more so was this season where I was just under the guidance of God showing me to listen to these prophets, listen to how to how to pray during this time, what to watch for, what to uh, look for in the news, you know, be a watchman on the wall and be aware of the things going down because once it hits the fan, people are going to be running to us, the prophets that they pretty much, again, I'm not a prophet, but the prophets that they were mocking and ridiculing and stuff. Um, and those of us who are awake, the watchmen on the walls who are aware of what is going down and trying to inform people are going to need to step up and be the answer that the people are looking for. They're going to they're gonna want to know God. They're going to want to know Jesus. They're going to be running and searching everywhere to find where to get these answers from. And uh, as Christians, we need to be fully prepared during this darkened time because this is going to be a billion soul harvest and we need to pay attention to what is going on and to be ready to give them an answer. And I think this is part of why I'm doing this this series is to give people an answer before they need an answer so that some of you who actually watch this, if anyone at all, will be ready and prepared for what is coming. And I hope that this uh, random talk and rambling that I have been giving is somewhat encouraged you. I know for me, I did not want to do this, but I have fortune cookie. <laughs> And for those of you who may not know this, God oddly speaks to me uh, through fortune cookies. It sounds really weird. I know it sounds deranged, but uh, it's just something I've I've always done. I, I've always had questions or inquiries, and I've noticed throughout the past couple decades that every time I open up a fortune cookie, the answer is there. Like, he's giving me the right one to take, the right one to eat, and, like, look at it. And I was sketchy about doing these videos. I didn't know if I should. I didn't know if I shouldn't. Who would listen? You know, would anyone be in favor of these? What, what sort of social network would I have? Um, is anyone going to be paying attention, or am I literally just talking to air, talking to the brick wall? And I, I went out for Chinese uh, a week or so ago, and that was heavily on my mind before buying these cameras and starting up all this stuff and here is the answer god gave me for my fortune cookie you will win favors when you expand your social circle so i think that was my go ahead to do this and from here on out uh, i'm going to dive in a little bit stronger into the word and into um, these times what to watch out for what to pay attention to and how to think differently about certain verses in the Bible that people may not have paid attention to before. And I know this is kind of a lame introduction. It didn't really explain too much on the Word and with God. Um, I'm just trying to give you a rough draft of who I am, where I'm coming from, and if these videos intrigue you in the slightest to continue and to delve into all this uh, all this turning of the tables, I guess, <laughs> of what's coming, then uh, keep paying attention and keep watching these videos. And I pray that you are opened and aware to what God is doing and that you, if not already, are one of his children to come to him in Jesus' name. And it was nice meeting you all. God bless, and I'll talk to you soon.